Hello friends, in this video on a uniformity uh, interpretations, I shall be talking to you about how to interpret the post void residual urinary volume findings. What is post void residual urinary volume? In the bladder, when it is full and when patient voids, the bladder empties. Actually, it should empty completely. But in variety of conditions, bladder is not able to empty fully. And whatever is the amount of urine left behind in the bladder after the completion of act of voiding is called as post void residual urinary volume. We have nowadays better terms to express the same thing. One term is called bladder voiding efficiency or void percentage. This means this also takes into account the initial bladder volume at the time of starting voiding. And it tends to tell you that the post void residual volume is a reflection of at what volume patient began voiding. If somebody began voiding at 300 ml, and it left behind with 100 ml PVRU, it is 30%, right? If somebody began with 400 cc of bladder volume, left behind with 100 cc, it is 25%, right? Mm -hmm. So in this side, on both the patients, post void residual urinary volume is 100. But then percentage of the bladder volume wise it is different. Okay, so we feel that bladder voiding efficiency is a better term. It can be calculated by dividing voided volume by the pre void volume multiplying by 100 and you get this data. But nonetheless, PVRU is a very common and popular terminology. It despite this uh, deficiency, this term is in vogue. Why does urine stay back inside the bladder. There are various reasons for this. The first and foremost, and that we believe as a urologist is a very common reason is that there is some kind of abnormality in the functioning of low urinary tract, dysfunctional low urinary tract, which is either on account of presence of bladder outflow obstruction because of BPH, cancer prostate, stricture, Metal stenosis, uterine stone, blah, blah. So many clinical conditions which can create blood outflow obstruction. Or as a result of detrusor underactivity. So either on account of either of these or a combination of these, you get a functional abnormality of low urinary tract resulting into a variable degree of PVRU. The second situation is a pharmacological consequence of a drug recently prescribed to the patient by somebody. A patient visits a physician who gives him an anticholinergic medication for chest disease, for abdominal pain or, or uterine things, so many things. And then these medicines have bladder relaxing effects and therefore patient will have a jump in his post void residual urinary volume. Then there's something called circumstantial. By this I mean that when patient was undergoing this test of uniformity and at the end of which he underwent a PVRU assessment, at that time, he his bladder was rapidly filled. Prior to the test, patient was asked to consume one, two, three, four, five glasses of water. Some people even drink two liters of water immediately just to fill up the bladder and then do the test. In that rapid fill situation of urinary bladder, bladder gets rapidly stretched and therefore the PVRU will be affected. Then there's another situation of what's called forced bladder stretch. Now this means patient was to undergo urinary test. He is asked to consume some liquid and when his bladder is full, he should report for a urinary flow test. The patient bladder got full. 
he came for the test but then he discovers that there is a queue or for some reason he has to wait now if he has to wait for some reason little more than which is normal for him then this stretch will adversely influence the contractile power of urinary bladder and therefore the pvru will change there is another scenario patient went in the lab passed urine his urophobicity report was generated and he came back when he came back for an immediate check up by bladder scan how much is the pvru but incidentally discover that somebody else is on the couch or doctor is busy or some reason he has to wait for 2 3 minutes extra before he gets his pvru reestimated that remember in this waiting time the patient's urinary system the kidneys are in a state of diuresis because he has consumed lot of water about 15 minutes before or half an hour before and his kidneys are in diuretic state they are producing urine at a much faster rate so if you ask him to wait even for 2 minutes 3 minutes his bladder will fill up and then you will calculate this as pvru so this is wrong data so these three situations are called circumstantial situations which will give rise to pvru then there are some structural abnormalities in the urinary tract which can give rise to high pvru for example a patient has a big bladder diverticulum the patient will void a lot of urine will go into diverticulum and when he comes back the urine will come back from diverticulum into the bladder lumen and this will be assessed as a large pvru similar thing will happen if somebody has high grade reflux in dilated tortuous ureters urine will go up during voiding and when it comes back for assessment of pvru the same urine will drop down back in the bladder lumen then finally there is a technical reason they can be a uh, error induced by either the doctor while calculating the pvru or the the machine can do some error so you can have various reasons to give rise to a high pvru the first two blocks are known as genuine reasons of high pvru while lower three box are reasons are known as false reasons for high pvru so why i am telling you this because as a practicing urologist you have to know all this and when you see the urophobicity report the clinical history the examination finding all that you have to bring in your mind to decide what is the reason for high pvru here is a patient who has bilateral grade 5 reflux and this is urine reflexing back in the ureters during filling phase of the bladder he voids and lot of urine goes back in the ureter and when he comes back for reassessment of pvru some urine has come back similarly this is the diverticulum in diverticulum when patient void the diverticulum becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because patient is voiding not outside but inside into the diverticulum and when he comes back for reassessment like here this is the patient with big diverticulum and the bladder empties the diverticulum becomes bigger further empty bigger diverticulum so these are the reasons for structural abnormalities which can give rise to high pvru then there is a very relevant question how many times a pvru should be assessed before you say that this is an important finding should you rely on one or should you do it multiple times actually this pvru is a reflection of a dynamic activity of the individual which is known as voiding now if for some reason patient is not happy with the act of voiding or, or you have an inkling that he has not voided the way he should have then this test should be repeated and my feeling is that you must do at least twice or if better thrice and then you should make an average and write on what is the pvru another controversy is what is the best way to document pvru practical is to do a bladder scan a bladder scan has technical fallacies operator dependent and machine dependent so we believe that if you ask a radiologist to assess the post void as the urinary volume by ultrasound this would be better because here operator dependent fallacies will be much lesser and the best is 
to put a util catheter and drain the bladder completely and then you know exact amount in data but then this is invisible so it is not practiced very often also people ask me that what is the cut off of the volume which you think is important for x individual which is important for y individual what is important for men what is important for women is there something which is called normal post white as urinary volume or whatever you see is pathological so what is this cut off between normal and abnormal if somebody and i'm talking of adult up to 50 ml of urine if left behind in the bladder in one one estimation then you should consider is that not very clinically relevant my personal way is if the pvru is less than the age of an individual i pass it off as okay okay and not put my entire money on making a diagnosis only on the basis of that value so this i consider as acceptable and normal but if somebody has more than 200 cc adult urine left behind in the bladder this is certainly certainly abnormal and needless to say anything close to 100 little less than 100 little more than 100 is in the gray zone and then you have to take into account other investigative findings clinical findings history taking before you pay attention pay relevance to the pvru now is the age difference in the cut off values for abnormality yes there is for children more than 10% of the bladder capacity is considered abnormal for adults as i just said pvru more than 100 ml is considered important and for elderly pvru more than 200 ml must be considered as important as i said you must do a serial measurements of post void residual urinary volume uh it is better that in a day do it two three times and then you may also repeat the same pvru assessment at periodical interval depending upon your own practice or your in, or your institutional practice some people like to do it monthly some people like to do it six weekly some people like to do it three monthly and you can do whichever way you want but uh, for any substantial change to occur in the bladder dynamics one would expect it to happen some in something around three months remember progressively increasing pvru indicates a failing detrusor muscle and it is of grave clinical significance that is why the serial estimation of pvru is more important than single estimation of pvru so thank you very much for your patient listening in case you have any questions or comments you can write to me on my email thanks very much